I'm gonna say it. This might be the most unacceptable, worst thing Cosmo has done. And there's many of questionable things he's done. But corrupting the youth, aka Iris, I think that might have crossed a line. She bamboozled me. I thought she legitimately thought and was in love with Chris out of that whole situation. She made it seem like, oh, the silver-haired boy, I'm really interested in that one. And I'm like, okay, she she knows that the ring was took. She's clearly talking like, okay, Chris and her de destined to be married. Hang on to that ring, big brother. And I'm like, oh, fuck. It makes that whole dynamic between Megumi and her seen in a completely different light. Because up to this point, you could argue like, oh, Megami's just being a little hot-headed. Like, she's a little too jealous of the little sister dynamic. And even if Cosma himself is questionable and would marry this 12 to 13-year-old kid, there's no... And I'm like, oh, he corrupted her. Elder brother, we're, we're getting into Oriimo territory. This is some Oni son. I'm like, oh, man. Cosma, you dirty bastard, you. This episode was hilarious. And just makes me leave once again saying, how did Darkness become the mature one of the group? But I thank the author for doing exactly that. A live reaction over on Patreon. If you want to see my mind break in real time, it's going to be over there exclusively. So, I think that whole kingdom arc that we just experienced, that's the best part of Konosuba. I think it's that followed by the movie is like my favorite arcs we've seen. And just, man, the... What they ended up doing with that infiltration mission, so turns out, I didn't realize it last week, I had a few people say that they thought this happened, and I was like, oh, that actually would make sense, but it's funnier to see it in motion. Uh, my boy got nothing. That whole eye candy scene was nothing, Iris just popped back into her body to wonder why Darkness was gonna smother her with titties, and Cosma got his face beaten in, which is even funnier. But the idea that he's pretty much like kicked out of the kingdom, he loses everything, and he has like a day left to stay in, and then Chris, aka... Eris pops up saying, hey, we gotta go steal that necklace because it's not just simply about body swap and Freaky Friday. It's like you could literally have immortality, which honestly I didn't think of, but that's actually kind of clever. If you switch bodies and then kill your original body, you're then stuck in the body you switched with, making it so you could extend your life in theory forever. So it's like, yeah, I can understand. And the funniest thing about Eris as a character is that when you look at her... I actually don't think she's all that different from Aqua in terms of a lot of uselessness. Now, both Aqua and Eris, aka Chris, um, very much have impressive magic at certain points. But it's the, the idea that while the only main difference is that Aqua gets drunk on her ass and becomes more of an alcoholic as the seasons go on, Eris is actually trying to stop incredibly powerful artifacts from destroying the world but when you watch her with Cosma, can you really argue she's all that different from aqua and the others not really like there there's an element of uselessness that is almost guaranteed if you hang around Cosma long enough and the idea of the drain touch he, like he basically became shigaraki in this episode from my hero academia like he was just walking around like a damn menace and the scene when he realizes that his final opponent is darkness and he just closes that door is comedy gold but the fact that only darkness out of the group realize this is what's crazy about this season and i think it's fantastic and it makes total sense the kinkiest one in the group while yes maybe likes to be tied up and uh probably wishes she was the one getting waterboarded instead of mitsuragi but uh at the end of the day she can be the most adult person in the room. Megami's just thinking this chuny looking guy in front of her is the coolest thing ever. Aqua's drunk out of her mind on Bubbly, and Darkness is like, what do I even do with this situation? To see her after that, just hold one up by her f She's kingpin in this girl, and Cosma's basically calling her mommy. It's just fantastic. The escalation was comedy gold. And the fact that it makes sense in the moment that they did a double steal, because they can't just bet on one of the steals working, especially given that our boy's probably going to be stealing panties more often than not. And the fact that it's revealed that he stole a ring that's only supposed to be given if the princess is to wed. And the fact that it's like, we can't even just give it back to her. It's like, it's such a complex situation that Cosma has to hold hold on to that for dear life can't just say he found like it's just it would be so disrespectful and you and you think that's complex enough and then you realize he corrupted the youth and this is more than just elder brother at this point god damn it Cosma! how do you manage to corrupt everything you interact with it's a talent and a curse all in one it's a curse for this world it's a talent for the anime because it makes for entertainment gold man 
like I can't breathe. Like my chest is a little like oh, it hurts a little because I've been laughing and just like, oh, this has just been such a good season. And we're only halfway through it. We are halfway through the funniest stuff Konosuba has directed to date. And it's only getting better. The characterization is being fantastic. You got the Megami progression with Cosma and that whole relationship dynamic. Darkness becoming more and more mature one of the group. And uh Aqua, honestly, I think is is sinking lower as it goes on in actuality. I think she's just becoming worse of an alcoholic. Yeah, she has some useful moments, but she's useless, let's be honest. Cosma is progressing the plot quite a bit. I mean, at this point, he's pretty much destined to kill the goddamn Demon King, and I guess he's gonna marry a princess, which I don't know how Megami's gonna feel about that one, but, like, the characterization is getting better. The story is progressing at a relatively solid pace, but the comedy is funnier than it's ever been. Stuff I think is never gonna be topped comedy-wise gets topped in an episode he waterboarded that boy man like he's just a psychopath and the fact that that's just a small joke in the sea of comedy gold says a lot about this episode i'm definitely very interested to see what they're gonna do because if you watch after the credits that uh fat bastard was quite disappointed that the necklace was stolen so i imagine sooner rather than later in this season we're gonna have a bit more with him unfortunately i mean fortunately because it's gonna be comedy gold but unfortunately for them because like the worst person to interact with but in general though this was this was good like i'm kind of glad that they did get force out of the kingdom because it makes the next time he interacts with the princess or anyone more impactful whether that's seasons from now episodes whatever right i think as funny and as out of pocket as the kingdom was it's good to be back to their home, which honestly, still, he does have a mansion still, so his life isn't as bad as he's making it out to be. But yes, um, Cosma is a bundle of chaos, and he is really his own worst enemy when you think of it. He surrounds himself by pretty stupid people, and if only he just acted a slightly more decent, maybe he would have been still in that kingdom at the end of the day. But the author found a good way to push them out of that, and now we're going into the second half of this season off of a comedy high that was unlike anything else in Konosuba. Like, honestly, yeah, for me anyway, I agree with the commenters saying that, you know, the the light novel that the movie did and the light novel that this season's doing is my personal favorite stuff in Konosuba. For me, that's absolutely my pick so far. Things could change in a season four or five, six, I'm sure, but like, as it stands, the comedy is the best for me, but it's also the plot and characterization progression that's getting better and better for me. But let me know what you thought, because... Unacceptable. He's corrupting the youth at this point. Cosmo can't keep getting away with this. This is his greatest sin in my opinion, but you'll have to see it. Let me know what you thought down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you know if I went upload more. And like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, why you over there? I'll also give you a video shout out. So today we got Game Senpai, Madra Fire, Isaiah Cicero, Michael Meadows, Watson, Bryant, and Sleep Fishy. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. Don't corrupt the youth. Have a good one.